My name is Barb Steinberg. I am a parent coach and a teen life coach for girls and a speaker on raising teen girls. I wanted to talk with you about a topic that recently came up in a support group that I am running for parents of tween and teen girls. And it was about the idea of a mom sharing that she was, she wished that her daughter had stronger opinions and spoke her mind more. And it got me thinking about how often as parents, we want our teens to be a little different than they are, or in some cases, a lot different than they are. Uh, and we have our own feelings and beliefs about why we want those differences to take place, why they want them to be different. So we're gonna to get to that, but I wanna just step back in time for a minute. And I want you to remember back when you were a tween or a teen and think about how your parents treated you and the message that they sent, the messages that they sent to you either covertly or overtly about who they wanted you to be, what they wanted you to be like or act like. So think about that for a minute. Did you get any sense or any direct messages that they wanted you to be even a little different than you were? I'm guessing that many of you did get that. I know that I did. Uh, in my house growing up, I felt like, and you know, this was my reality, whether it was my parents' reality or not, my reality was that I felt like my parents, when I was a teenager, really wanted me to be quieter. They wanted me to comment less, be less vocal, ask less questions, push back less with my thoughts, opinions, and questions. They wanted me to um, be less reactive, less emotional, a little bit more logical, and they wanted me to be thinner. So my take on all of that is that I felt like, and I didn't have words for this, of course, it was just a feeling. I felt like they wanted me to be smaller in so many ways. They wanted me to be physically smaller and they wanted my big personality to be smaller. Now, let me be clear, my parents loved me and you know, they, I don't think that they would have ever said, no, we don't want her to be different. We just want you to be, you know, a little quieter. <laughs> so yes, they loved me. And I think also they wanted to be a little bit more comfortable, right? So if I were pushing less and I were commenting less and doing all of that, then they probably would have felt a little bit more com comfortable. And don't we all want to feel comfortable? Yeah. And I think that they also wanted me to be have a happy, comfortable life. And from their point of view, um, being thinner, you would have you would, you know, be uh, there'd be less chance of you receiving comments or negativity and you would have a happier life because of that. So they had really good intentions for the most part, right? I just didn't interpret it that way. And so often our teenagers don't. Uh, even our, you know, most benign comments sometimes can be received as being critici criticism and they feel that they are being criticized and judged. And so we know that they're come when they're coming from that place, we want to be really, really careful with our words. So when you were a teenager and if you did feel like your parents wanted you to be a little different than you were, how did that make you feel? I'm guessing that it didn't make you feel great. And in some cases it made you feel bad. It made you feel like you weren't necessarily loved for exactly who you were in that moment. And maybe you didn't feel accepted or celebrated. And that doesn't feel very good. And again, your parents might have had the best intentions as well. We are a different generation of parents. Our children will be a different generation of parents. I like to think that we're getting more, we're evolving more and more with each generation. We're becoming better equipped parents over time. And of course we are going to make mistakes as we're learning as well. But when we think about how we felt when we were teenagers, our parents wanting us to be different, we can step into our children's shoes a little bit and we can look at our own selves as parents and ask ourselves, do I want my daughter to be different than she is? I hear from parents, you know, when I meet with them in parent coaching, 
And they say, you know, I want, for example, I want her to be stronger. I want her to be more bold. I want her to stand up for herself. Uh, you know, I don't want her to be a wallflower and get walked all over and be a doormat. And, and, you know, they have really good reasons for wanting that. It is coming from a place of love and protection. So, you know, you might be thinking the ways that parents might want girls to be different. You know, I want her to be athletic. I want her to be a part of a team and have that experience. I want her to be smarter and make straight A's so that she can get a go into a good college and get a good job. Um, you know, I want her to be braver and bolder. I want her to be quiet and less aggressive so that she can have better friendships and won't be rejected as often by friends. So there's just a lot of different wants that we can have when it comes to wanting our, our kids to be different. You know, that said, in adolescence, they're working really hard on identity of, and they're working hard on discovering who they are now and who they want to become. So there's going to be some messiness involved. There's going to be some ups and downs as they're trying to figure that out. So for the girl that it might be a little bit too aggressive with her friends, she is going to learn that, you know, one way or another, hopefully with less pain involved. Life tends to give us feedback. And so we as parents, I think, can be the shelter knowing that life, her friends, her peers will give her feedback. We want to be there rather than to also drive home that point of her maybe being too aggressive with her friends. We want to be the shelter, as I said. So we want to create the safe space. So when that feedback comes, we can be the ones to help her to get back up and to be resilient and to learn from it and become an even better version of herself, more of who it is that she wants to become and is meant to be. So when we want our girls to be something different than they are, often it comes from fear. And so many of, of our choices and responses as parents come, it comes from fear, whether we are connected in, to that or not. So, you know, the, think of the mom and dad that want their daughter to be bolder and braver and stand up for herself and speak more, have opinions, state her desires. You can see that's coming from a place of, I'm afraid that if she doesn't, she's going to get walked all over. She's not going to get to know herself. She's going to make decisions that aren't even her own and they could be poor decisions or dangerous decisions. And it's scary. And it also, I think, can trigger in us, using this example, when we watch that, you know, maybe we felt like we were not strong enough when we were young and we value that in ourselves now. So to see it in our own daughters, it's a bit of a mirror as to who we used to be and that we didn't like that about ourselves so that when we see it in our daughter, we don't like it in her and we want to change it so that we can feel more comfortable and we can feel like we're protecting her, which also makes us feel more comfortable. So I'm wondering having this insight and this awareness, is there a way for us as parents to look at those parts of our girls that we wish were different or we, or we want to change? Once we identify where is that want coming from in us? Is that about a fear? Is that about us feeling more comfortable and safe? We, we should ask ourselves, well, those parts of her that I wish were different, can I admire that part? Can I respect it? Can I celebrate it? So going back to my parents, me having this big personality and a lot of thoughts and opinions and questions and all of that, I certainly can see from their point of, point of view that that wasn't always easy. And I can also see now as a parent, if that could have been celebrated, like, yeah, it is sometimes a total bitch to parent a kid who is constantly pushing back and mouthy and has opinions and you know all of that. And if you step back and remove yourself from the your emotion of it to be able to say, you know what? That's a girl that I hope will go out into the world as an adult and will have strength, will be able to share her point of view, will be able to sit in a boardroom and disagree with a coworker or a boss. So being able to admire or celebrate that part of her. So for example, if you have a shy and a quiet girl, imagine if we had a world of only extroverts 
and everyone being loud and not that all extroverts are loud, but everyone, you know, um, expressing in that way, it could be a really noisy world that's bombarding us, but there are girls that are a little bit more shy or a little bit more quiet. So when they do speak up, we're going to pay attention. It's a value. And they're offering and giving to the world in, in a different way. They're not expressing it with loud vocals. So can we respect and admire that? Can we appreciate that in her? That she's careful with her words and she shares only when she feels that it's necessary. So just to be able to kind of reframe it and look for the good in the characteristics that sometimes challenge you or bring up feelings in you. It can take some time, I think, to get there. And I would also say, you know, maybe at the end of every day, you even write down one thing that you experienced with your daughter today that you're able to reframe and appreciate it and celebrate it so that you can begin to possibly view her through a different lens. And I'll say this, if that happens, you viewing her through a different lens, she will feel you differently. She will feel different energy coming from you. To feel that someone's appreciating you, celebrating you, admiring you, for you to even speak that out loud to her, to be able to say, man, oh man, I wish that you would stop pushing me sometimes. And there's a part of me that's really proud of you that you do. I love that you are your own girl. I love that you're coming into your own. I love that you have your own opinions and you're thinking for yourself, you know, or I love your quiet confidence. For her to feel that coming from you, for her to hear that, imagine what that would feel like to grow up feeling like the essence of who you are is celebrated and wanted. Listen, I think we could change the planet if that's what we were doing. And I think we're on, we're, our, we're on our way to doing so. So hopefully this is giving you some food for thought. Please share this video with anybody that you think it might be a benefit to. And uh, I hope that you will also visit my website, barbsteinberg.com and check out the e-courses, the webinars that I've created for you to have an amazing relationship with your girls and to help to parent her and grow her into the woman that she is meant to be. Have a fabulous day. Thanks for listening.